Oh, good morning, everybody. The song is called Sing a Song of Joy. Sing a song of joy. What's it called? Sing a song of joy. Which is different than Sing a Song of Glee. <laughs> I, I, I uh, see, what I say, I just wrote a weekly email about this for either this week or next week. And, and, and it's about, <laughs> I think we get wrapped up in the difference between feelings and understanding. Because I've been talking to a couple of friends this week about prayer and what have you, and they're saying, you know, I don't, I'm not feeling it this year. I'm just not feeling the holidays this year. I'm not feeling the prayer life. I'm not feeling it. I said, do it anyway. I don't care if you feel it. <laughs> do it. Just do it. Because it's the smart thing to do. Your feelings will pass. The stuff you like and the stuff you don't like, it's all going to pass. It comes and goes. Do it anyway. Prayer is very effective. Just because I don't necessarily understand it or believe it right now. I, it hasn't happened in a few years, but I, oh, in the early days, a couple of Sundays, I woke up and thought, oh, what's the point? <laughs> really, what's the point? I don't believe this. How, how am I going to go in there today? And I thought, oh, Sean, you better get on a different track. You've got to talk in an hour. Uh, <laughs> But, but I, I come to understand, I, with two, one person, the other day, a good friend, and I, uh, I thought, he needs prayer. So I went to where he works, and I said, where can we go that's private? He thought, oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> and I said, no, no, you're not. And, and so he started to go outside. I said, is there any place inside? Well, his basement of where he works is, uh, you go outside and down. So we went down there, and I said, come on, we're going to pray together. And I took his hands, and I said... Uh, a prayer of giving everything over to God, uh, a surrendering prayer, and I said, thank you, and I left. And he loved it. And so yesterday I talked to him, I said, so have you been praying every day? He said, no, I'm not really feeling. I said, what are you kidding, talking about? I saw the look on your face when we prayed together. He said, that's because you were leading the prayer. I said, well, I'm not coming there every day. <laughs> and you need to pray up your walls. You need to pray up your life. And prayer, again, is not about begging for God for stuff. It's about affirming the divine possibility. The affirmations uh, don't make a thing true. They offer us a reminder of what is true. You know, the, the, those silly little Christmas songs we used to, no, they weren't Christmas songs. They were all your songs, songs in my church. But you know, I've got the joy, 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 joy down, down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my, in my heart to stay. stay. And I'm so happy, He's so very happy. happy. I've got the love of spirit in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of spirit in my heart. And then we went, I've got that peace that passes understanding. We're down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got that peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of spirit in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of spirit in my heart. Sing along. I've got that wonderful love of my blessed Redeemer down deep in the depths of my heart. <laughs> Where? I've got that wonderful love of my blessed Redeemer down deep in the depths of my heart. In the depths of my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of spirit in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of spirit in my heart. Boom, boom. Uh, I broke a sweat on that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, no, I'm feeling joy. It's not that kind of sweat. But, uh, there are different kinds. <laughs> there's vacuuming sweat. There's joyful sweat. And, there's, uh, <laughs> and, and so do we. <laughs> ah, we label it all. We make it all up. It's very clear. But you see a song like that, to be singing that, and I'm so happy. Because somebody is going to be in Walmart today singing, and I'm so happy. So very happy. You're going to get caught in traffic. And I'm so happy. So very happy. And why not? Because I've got the love of God deep in the depths of my heart. And just to say, I don't have to feel it. I can just know it. 
Whether I feel it or not, the love of God is deep in the depths of my heart. So there. And then go on about your business. I thought, it has to. To me, that was logical. That certain things, spiritual things, are just logical to believe. And so I do. And let me tell you why they're logical. Because I experience a certain peace and a certain internal joy when I know them. I just, it just is. And so therefore, I might as well go on with that, whether I'm in the foulest mood or the best mood. Because my foulest mood will pass more quickly when I know the truth about God, what I call God, when I know the truth about joy or love. When I know the truth, I am set free. And that was the instruction. You will know the truth and you will be set free. It did not say, and you will feel the truth. And you will be set free. Did not say that at some moment we'll buy you a gift and you will be set free. <laughs> and people will be nice to you and you will be set. Didn't say any of that. It said, and you will know the truth. Capital T truth. That means it has no opposite. I know we were talking earlier about my truth. There really is no my truth. There is truth. And there, there's my opinion. And that's, that's all it is. There is capital T truth, and that truth is that which does not change. You cannot alter it. The truth about our being is that we are inherently good. Another capital letter word, capital G, good. When I put it in caps, it means there's no opposite. I cannot not be good. I can be so poorly behaved, trust me. Some of you have seen it. And... Uh, <laughs> We can all be really poorly behaved. We can forget that doesn't make us not good. We are good. It has nothing to do with what church we go to or don't go to. It has nothing to do with how we drive on the highway. It has nothing to do with how we treat each other, believe it or not. And it doesn't matter who we have voted for or not voted for. It doesn't, none of that has any bearing on the good that I speak of, the love that I speak of, I am good because I can't not be. Do we hear that? I am good because I can't not be. Let's say that together. I, I am good, good because, because I can't, I can't not, not be. be. Let's say it again. I, I am good because I can't not be. be. One more time. I, I am good, good because I can't, I can't not be. be. And that's the message we need to take with us throughout our day. I am just good because I can't not be good. Capital G, good. I can try with all my might to alter that, and I still can't do it. I can think I can, but I can't. I can tell myself I'm the most awful thing in the world, but it doesn't make it true. It just means I'm behaving foolishly right now. And, and uh, really impinging upon my joy. Uh, and we don't have to impinge upon our joy. We don't have to negate our joy at all. Again, we're not talking about glee. We're talking about joy. Joy is the knowing. It's that gut knowing that we are good. And so therefore, whatever's happening in my life or not happening that I wish were happening, it has no bearing on whether on my goodness. It has no bearing on whether God is good or not. It has a lot to do with life on life's terms. And you know, I don't care for those. I just don't care for life on life's terms. Because uh, they're not always nice. They're just not always nice. Because I, I, I don't know about you. Yes, I do. But I, uh, <laughs> often I wish circumstances were different. Than they are. How, anybody? Yeah. Yeah. Well, not always. But, oh yeah, Marianne's waving her hand wildly in the back. Why would you want circumstances to be different, Marianne? Judge her. <laughs> and so, you know, you know, it's a fun, the things. Observe yourself going through your day. Observe not with guilt, but with humor, at how many things you wish were different as you drive along, as you get out of your car, as, as you, you know, how many things do you wish were different on the highway? How many things do you wish were different? How many steps do you wish were different? How many fewer steps do you wish there were in the world? You know, 
And there are places to live where there are like no steps, there are no hills to climb. There, there are places that exist like that. You know that you wish. Oh, that, how, how many of you have complained about Christmas already? And look at it, it's beautiful. Yep. I'm sorry, but this is, oh, I'm not sorry. This is lovely. And it, and it tickles me. Look, there's a Miss Piggy in the middle of a wreath back there. And we're going to complain about Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and and so how often do you look in the mirror and wish it were different? How often do you look in that mirror and say, hmm, jeez. <laughs> you know, you do this and you don't feel anything. <laughs> oh, you do it and it's curly and you wish it weren't. Oh, it's straight. I wish it were curly. Oh, I oh, I wish it were a different face. I wish it weighed less. I wish it were blue. I wish it were pink. I wish it were something else. Oh, you know, I wish I had a different vest on. As if I can't go change the vest, I'll stand there screaming at the mirror. Uh, David taught us that in the Thought Exchange. Stand in the mirror. You got a red shirt on and you want a blue shirt. And I was like, oh, I really want a blue shirt. I wish that mirror would change. I was like, go change your shirt. And the mirror will be different. And there's some things in that mirror that just aren't going to change anytime soon. And so I better love what's in that mirror or I'm going to rob myself of some of my joy. I need to love what's in the mirror. 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 I need to, or I'm going to rob myself of some joy. You know, every time I wish somebody had a different outfit on, I'm robbing myself of the joy I can see in the mirror. Every time I wish somebody would talk to me differently. Every time I wish it were different than what it is rather than going to spirit to say, tell me what it is because I'm making up a story that robs me of my joy. You know, if we could go to prayer first and then go to judgment. <laughs> go to prayer. Okay, spirit, tell me what this is because I feel judgment coming on and that judgment isn't going to enhance my joy. Every time you think about the past, before you judge, before maybe before you get down memory lane, you might want to say, Spirit, I'm going to need some influence here on the truth of how I am loved before I go into this, uh, this past thing. So listen to this. Oh, I'll tell you this first. It's what Charles Fillmore, Unity's co-founder, said defines joy as. I have got that song in my head the whole time I'm talking. Good. Joy, the happiness of God expressed through his perfect idea, man. Man means both man and woman. Uh, joy and gladness are strength giving, especially if the mind is fixed on the things of spirit. Affirm the joy of the Lord is my strength. And let me tell you what Lord is in case anybody, I never know how, how familiar you are with all this. Lord metaphysically means law, divine law, that which does not change. And so to take on the joy of the law is my, is my strength. Meaning to embrace spiritual law, to, to seek to work with spiritual law rather than resisting it. Uh, and, then, and then we're home free. We're completely home free by embracing spiritual law because it's, it's just the good that will not change. So, I'll read from my favorite book here, The Holy Spirit's Interpretation of the New Testament, which is, uh, it goes along with the Bible, or at least the New Testament. It goes from, from uh, Matthew through Revelation. And this comes from John chapter 16, Gospel of John chapter 16, and it says, One will is within you, so that the one you serve is yourself, capital S, self. This is your purpose, to serve yourself fully. This is the purpose for which you were created, so it is this that will bring you the greatest of joy. But within you also there is a great resistance to your one true joy, for this part of your mind does not know your joy. Pay attention here. This part of your mind does not know your joy, and it does not know you. It will tell you that you are what you are not. It will insist that following the path of truth is to follow the path of falsity. And that in following the path of falsity, you will surely die. Listen not to the voice that does not know you. Heed not its warnings. 
For the light is in you, and you are the light. Darkness cannot be your way. Remain focused on the light, and you remain focused on your truth. Stay with the light, and you stand firmly on the path of joy and truth. So there is an aspect of us that does not know the truth about ourselves, and yet it pretends it does. That part of us that tells us we should be criticizing the highway and the drivers on it, the part of us that tells us we should be criticizing ourselves, the part of us that tells us we should be criticizing, period, is the part that does not know us. The part that reminds us to praise, praise love, praise truth, praise, 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 praise the Christ in me is awake now. The part of us, that part knows us, that part of us, aware, part of us is aware of us and is on our side and is ready for us to succeed in knowing ourselves as God beings. That part of us that knows us, oh, is nuts about us and only, only wills for us to be happy, joyous, and free while life is happening, while life on life terms is happening. You know, it doesn't mean we don't grieve. It doesn't mean we don't have mourning. It doesn't mean that we don't feel our feelings. What it does mean is we don't have to resist them as if they are dangerous. We don't have to resist. The part that doesn't know us wants us to resist because they, they say, you'll be safe. If you can just get rid of this, you'll be safe. And it's the very opposite of the truth, which is, go ahead, have it, and you'll be fine. People have been living through this stuff for years. Now, one other section here, and it comes from Acts, chapter 2. And it says here, now, if you don't know what the Holy Spirit is, the Holy Spirit is that voice within. And uh, Jesus, in the book of John, called it the Counselor. I will send a Counselor. And it's or a comforter it was also called in the Bible, and I I use the biblical terms because in this case because I like it, it works for me. But you can call it something else if you want to. But each and every one of us has this. It's the voice within us that tells us the truth about ourselves and guides us toward our joy, always toward our joy. It always guides us toward our joy. We know what's going to harm us. We know perfectly well what will harm us. So don't, don't play the, that game. Well, I don't know whether to go on this street or this street. And often, uh, who cares? Go either way. Your joy's waiting at the end of the street and perhaps on the journey down either street. And it's not always comfortable, especially if we're not in the habit of listening to it. But I've grown in the habit over the years of listening to it, so I do like it. So, chapter 2, the Holy Spirit knows the way. The Holy Spirit sees the whole plan, and not only your part in it. Therefore, you must trust all that the Holy Spirit asks you to do, even if what is asked does not seem to be for you. Because you see, how can you be truly joy-filled when someone you love is not? The Holy Spirit sees one, one a child and one plan. And so what Spirit gives to you is not for you alone. To learn this is so you must do as spirit asks and trust and now it says your joy shall increase or your joy shall increase as you listen to the voice of the holy spirit for it shall lead you to see no value where there is none and to know that love is already within your heart this love which is the source of all joy is not a special love that includes some but not all it is an encompassing love from which joy comes bursting forth from your heart into the world you see. So, who here wants to see love and recognize it easily? Okay, then are you willing to have the thoughts necessary to uh, do this? Are you willing to say the words necessary to do this. Now, I'll be honest, I don't always know what the words and the thoughts are to do this, but I usually know the ones not. Yeah. I'm pretty clear on what won't work for me. Now, one of my favorite things, Reyes and Garrett just bought a house, I've just bought a pool with a house. And, uh, <laughs> 
And one of Reyes's uh, edicts as a host to her guests is no political talk. Well, we're all having fun, no political talk. And it's wonderful. It's, she's, not, she's, not, she's not a pain about it. She's not unkind about it. Just no political talk, please. Uh, I respect it because she's my host. And it's, you're so, it's a place where we're free with beautiful surroundings, quite frankly, uh, to play. Uh, and I, and I caught one night, somebody was looking to engage me, and she said, please don't do it. And he, he, it's like he didn't know how to stop. And I said, no, we have to respect this. And I swam to the other side of the pool. And uh, I was like, there's no, what better way to end a conversation than to swim to the other side of the pool? <laughs> Especially if someone's not in the pool with you and they're having the conversation, whoosh, okay, well, unless they run down to the other end. So remember this through the holiday season. If you're not having the conversation, swim to the other side of the pool. But I, I, but I respect this and I, uh, and I appreciate it. Because what, what to, to just ask spirit, what's the next thought to think for my joy and the joy of all? What's the next word to say for my joy and the joy of all? What's the next TV show to watch or not to watch? What's the next radio to turn on or to turn off in order for my joy and the joy of all? What website? What posting? What whatever for the my joy and the joy of all? And sometimes we need a certain statement of protest. But I invite you to look at your motives when you make it. Is it for your joy and the joy of all? Or is it just to show how smart you are? It's your big smarty pants for the holiday season. Yes. You know, you're right about what's wrong. That's not enough. There's got to be, I, if you're going to speak out, it's, it's the, the intention has to be for your joy and the joy of all. And sometimes we do have to speak up in order to remind each other of what's good and what's possible, and where we're coming up short. Sometimes we all need reminders, including me, of where we're, we're missing the mark. And say, no, your way of thinking is not the way of joy. And here's why. I've, I've got a chart. <laughs> and uh, I've got a PowerPoint presentation. Let me show you. Just happen to have right here. And, uh, but other times it's just, would you like a hug? Can I tell you how beautiful you look today? There's no faster way to joy than a compliment. Mm -hmm. And if somebody says, oh no, you just simply say, you're welcome. <laughs> and you want about your business. And so, sing your song of joy. Your song of joy that God is the one power and the one presence as the universe and as your life. God the good omnipotence. So it is. Amen. Amen. Amen.